Okay, so I'm just getting ready to do a baby quilt here. My cousin's daughter, actually. I always think of her as my, I always just think of them as cousins, but my cousin's daughter is actually getting ready to have her second child. And so I'm making a little quilt for her. So I like to use fusible batting. The only problem with it is it sticks together like crazy. Um, this is actually a queen size roll. Unfortunately, I didn't have any crib sizes right now, so we'll just cut this one down and order some more. Anyhow. All right. Let's get this all pulled apart. Um, I think for these purposes, for this purpose, I'm going to go ahead and make it a single layer. Um, sometimes with baby quilts I like to do a double layer just to add the warmth, but this is a nice fleecy blanket already. So, just going to use a single layer of this as soon as I get it all unfolded to where I can cut up a piece. All right, come on. I may just go ahead and cut it off while it's still folded. That way I can have another piece about the same size. Just cutting it right now will be just fine. Good scissors here. And I'm not measuring or anything to look like that just now. I'm going to piece them together and as long as my batting's a little bit larger than my front here. It doesn't even need to be as large as my back. It just needs to be as large as my front piece, which actually I already cut, and I don't think I need even that much, but yeah, I don't even need that much. So I'm gonna have some waste, but I usually use it for pillows or things like that, so it doesn't really matter. Or, you know, if I have a nice size extra piece, I use it for, extra batting in a hot pad. Generally use um, Insel Bright for hot pads, but it's not a bad idea to have an extra piece of padding, even in a hot pad, so. Anyhow. All right, now I just need to make sure I'm cutting fairly straight. Hate to get to the end and realize I've cut in a foot. Anyhow, I'm gonna lay this out for a minute. There we go. See, I already started going the other direction. But at least that's too big and not too small. a single layer. Like I said, it's nice and fleecy. It'll be nice and warm. So. Yeah, I even thought about just, since I didn't have batting that was already cut to quilt the bait crib size, I even thought about just piece in the two fleecy pieces flat together and uh, just making it like a 
a summer quilt. But it's good to have a little bit of layering between them so I can do that if I can get it apart. <laughs> again and put the top part on it and cut it up. up. Oop, my scissors are over here. This is by no means an exact science right now. I'm just trying to get something a little bit bigger than what the top of the quilt is. If I didn't have so much stuff on my table, I'd lay it out there. But this will be fine. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cut a little bit oversized. So I'd love to see some comments on how everybody else likes to do their quilts. I like the fusible batting. Um, I try doing the other sometime at where you have to pin it all together and that works well too. It just, the fusible is really nice to just be done and have it stuck together long enough to at least tie this. This one, this kind of crib quilt, I wouldn't, you know, if I had just a regular um, crib size sheet of batting that wasn't fusible, that's fine too, because it, it's a size that stays together really easy. Um, but on a queen or king size quilt, I like to have the fusible because it will stick together um, and I don't have to do all the pinning and all that. Um, sometimes I use the fusible powder too. That works pretty well. Just kind of curious what everybody else does. Oop, and that, way to go. I just pulled the bottom. Okay. So normally, you would want to try to center your front on your back. But I think this front and back piece are very close in size, so... I'm going to try to even this up with the top as much as I can. Um, but yeah, normally you would want to have a nice big back and have it extra wide from your front. And then you don't really have to do um, a lot of making sure that you get it just right. been trying to research to get a different type of ironing board um, for quilting. I have always hated the fact that this is a clothing style ironing board. Like I would just really rather have something square or rectangular actually, but most ironing boards are made for you to be able to put a shirt sleeve over the end. And unfortunately for quilting, it makes it very difficult. So I don't need to worry as much about the width because my back is a little bit longer than the front. But 
I do need to worry about the length because they're very similar in size. So I want to make sure that I'm, I'm a little bit actually too tall there, too high. And I have some left at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and try this one more time. I always say that one more time and it's about four more times <laughs> anyhow all right I got a loose hair on me here there okay all right so I'm not really even at the top but I'm fairly close got plenty on this side here got plenty on this side all the way down and go to the bottom and I've got plenty at the bottom too okay so go ahead and turn my iron on and then we'll iron it down and get it nice and fused together and I will decide from there I believe I'm gonna do um, just knot this one. I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna knot it at the corners. Tie it. That's a better way to put it. Some people call it knotting, some people call it tying. Um, ooh, I call it, I got a thread there. Why do I have a thread there? Maybe you shouldn't pull. Where's it coming from? Coming from over here. I'll tell you what. That's fine. That's fine. I just love this fabric. It's so nice and soft. I don't know. I hope this isn't reading. So it's a baby girl. So I hope it's not reading too boyish, but. just fine. Boy, girl. A lot of people talk about colors for boys and colors for girls. And I'm just kind of, yeah. <laughs> I think we still want to do pink for girls and blue for boys but I'm very much just do all the colors <laughs> and actually I was reading somewhere once a long time ago I think when my friend was having her first daughter that really for babies we should do primary colors because that's what they see um, the best, the earliest, and so, um, you know, like red, red, green, blue. So it's kind of funny that we do pink and blue, and usually pale blue at that. I don't wanna. I just kind of messed it up. Ooh. I needed to get see again that shirt, part of the ironing board. I had it kind of over here and I need to get it laid down so I had to move it so then now I've moved everything and wrinkled it awesome as in not awesome and I'm moving my iron too much I when you're doing fusible you really just need to press for four or five seconds in every spot honestly probably don't necessarily every spot but like the outside especially and you know then here and there it's probably not a huge deal if you miss especially on a crimp quilt it's not a huge deal if you miss a few spots just make sure that you get the outside especially middle a little bit and press it down. 
press for a few seconds. All right, let's go ahead and move it. Actually, I should have my ironing board flipped around from where my outlet is. That would give me more space down here on the nice rectangular part, but I forgot to do it before I started, so oh well, it'll be fine. All right, and I like to try to get really close to the edge. Um, you don't want to get too close because you get that fusible on your iron. But um, the closer you get to the edge, the less likely it is to go ahead and peel up. So. This is going to be so cute. I love the little animals. And even though they're not primary colors, they sure are pretty pastels. So this is kind of what I what I refer to as a wear and tear quilt for baby. <laughs> um, you get dragged everywhere and And it'll, once it's tied and washed a few times and all that, it'll scrunch up really nicely, be just a really nice little lanky. So, for this one's big sister, I actually made a quilt that had, uh, on the backing, I had used some pieces from a eighth grade promotion dress. I, I actually wore it, well, let me put it that differently. It was actually a dress that I had worn at the baby's grandmother's wedding. <laughs> and then I had worn it again for my eighth grade promotion, but um, I just thought it was kind of neat that it was little scrap pieces from a um, dress that I'd worn at the baby's grandmother's wedding. And so, but it was on the back. It wasn't anything I did for the front piece. I just wanted, I had a few scrap lacy pieces from this dress and I thought that'd be kind of neat to just put it on the back and, you know, it's in there, but it's not really, it wasn't really part of the focus pattern or anything. It's just kind of, I, I don't know why I carried that dress around forever. And, uh, I guess because I always thought, you know, the first few years, because I thought I'd wear it again when I was a teenager. And after that, I kind of liked doing little projects like this. And so it was really nice material. I thought, well, we'll just hang on to it and someday I'll do something with it. And there it was like 30 years later. And I thought, you know what? It's time to use some of this. You know, some of that, you know, keep it, keep it well. Fabric sometimes stays really nice. Um, if you don't keep it well, it can, you know, depending on your house, maybe it's smoky, maybe animals, etc. It can get kind of nasty, but this stayed folded up. Um, I went through it every once in a while so that it got aired out. That sort of thing. You should always do that with your quilts and your quilt fabric. Um, if you have like an excess amount like I have here, um, once in a while you should have, I have some bars of soap tucked in some of this. Um, Nothing that's gonna dye it or anything like that, but just for some scent, uh, anyhow, and some dryer sheets every once in a while. I'll, the, these shelves are not full. They are filled at the front. So tucked into the back, there's um, some dryer sheets and things like that to keep the scent nice. So, and to keep the, anything from you know, if I don't investigate these shelves very often, I don't want anything getting in there and 
getting to them. So, keeps those, you know, not that I have those, but maybe one or two moths here or there find their way up to the top, up to the first, you know, top four here. actually do a lot of my work at night so I'll have the lights on upstairs here even though it's daytime right now <laughs> um, I do a lot of my work at night so I'll have the lights on upstairs and you know if a mouth if a moth, if a moth got anywhere in the house it'll be traveling up to the light and then you know you got fabric up here so they just enjoy that but yeah, I have some things on the shelves at the back that help prevent any little things like that. So, all right, um, I'm doing a little too much ironing here. I need to start pressing. Um, I'm seeing what's happening is I'm distorting the seams just a little bit. So, and I can tell here toward the bottom that I don't have all my seams pressed really well. Because I think that one's flipped. But it's fused now, so. Anyhow, need to pay attention to what I'm doing. All right. Last move here and we'll have this this side anyhow pressed down I'll flip it over and do the other side see that seam right there that doesn't quite feel okay I guess it's okay so start in the middle that's the other thing, you're supposed to start in the middle and work your way out. Um, on something this small, I just kind of wanted to start at the end so that my, as you can see, <laughs> I had very little extra length for the back. So I wanted to make sure they were gonna even up. And then, yeah, I just need to press it down and fuse. I'm going to take a little extra time here at the edge, especially because that's where some bulky seams are too. And if it doesn't fuse well, it's going to come right up if I, I'm going to tie this one right away so it's not as big of an issue, but like if you were fusing it and thinking, oh, I got to get onto a different, I got to get this other project finished and so you fuse this and you want to fold it up and put it in a pile and forget about it and then you need to bring it out and you gotta unfold it and I'm working on it for a little bit and then I gotta fold it back up and you know then I come bring it out and work it on it for a little bit it, the more you fold it up the more you toss it around etc the better it needs to be fused so this is gonna get pretty much go straight downstairs and I'm gonna put it on the dining room table and tie it so not a big deal but I am gonna make sure that the ends are fused pretty well you can see I also still have some um, I can't think of the word <laughs> wrinkles in the back. Uh oh my alarm's going off downstairs. I, think I better go get it. Let's do a quick, 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 quick. Quick, quick, quick. I forgot my phone was downstairs.
but he's got just a little bit. So it does tend to fuse down even when you do the top layer. As you can see, got a little bit of excess fabric in here. So I'm going to go ahead and peel it up just a little bit. We'll work out from the center on the back here and get these wrinkles out. That's the other thing about an ironing board is it sometimes just is not wide enough. And so like I've fused this and it's already kind of starting to pull. One of these days I'll figure out something maybe do. I thought about doing like a nice, nice size sheet of plywood and wrapping it in um, a good material that you can iron on. But I don't know. And, th and then taking that plywood and actually being able to put out on my quilting table here. It's just I'm kind of lazy and don't want to clean it off, so that might be a problem. But figure that out someday. As you can see, I still got a ripple. Um, and mostly that happens because of this spot on the ironing board. It just drives me nuts. But there we go. I think we're good.
Okay, so what I need to do here now is I'm actually going to try to use this fabric to face. You can see, though, it got a little bit uh, short, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. Um, let's see. If I fold this back to create our... Let me get these out of the way. Fold this back. I don't think I'm going to be able to f do this. <sighs> Maybe. So I'm just going to fold this right back to. In fact, I, you know what? I didn't cut it quite tight enough. Yeah, if I just fold this back, I think I'll just barely have enough to flip it over. So I'm going to fold it down, iron it down to a quarter inch from the, actually, let's see, half inch. I know how much we got there. All right, so I'm going to cut this all down to an inch and then it'll all be the same and if it doesn't work then I'll just have to bind it with something else. recommended way but Yeah, so I got a little bit short here, too. I think I can make it work. If I can't, I've got some extras left for some binding, so it's fine. Yeah, this isn't going to be extremely square, but it's pretty close.
show you my boo-boo. When I was cutting the batting, I nicked it. So I think what I'll do there, I'll fold it and try to fold it over, and I'll probably have to put a little, no, let's do a butterfly or something, right? That'll be a little patch on it.